Okay, so this is um, a workout solutions for the spring 2022 exam two for calculus one at Oklahoma State University. Um, this can be used to review for exam two in the fall 2022 semester. But I want you to be aware that this uh, worked out exam is not sufficient for review. So make sure you're also looking back over old web assigns and other things um, and not just the content on this worked out exam from last semester. Okay, so to start out, um, it says answer the following multiple choice questions. So I have a, a function f, graph of f is given here, and it's looking at comparing the um, f of 2, f prime of 2, and f double prime. So let's think about those separately. So what is f of 2? f of 2 is 0. What about f prime of 2? Well, f prime of 2 deals with the slope, and I can see the slope is negative, is less than 0. And what about f double prime of 2? Well, it's concave up, so that means the second derivative is positive, so it's greater than 0. So now I can put them in order. f prime of 2 is the smallest because it's less than 0. f of 2 is 0. And then f double prime is greater than 0. So the correct answer is... Um, next one, suppose f double prime is greater than zero for, um, so that means that the function is concave up. So this means f is concave up on that region. Let L of x represent the linearization of f at x equal four, which of the following is true? So let's think about the possibilities here. I have a concave up function on the interval from negative one to seven. Oh, sorry, negative one is here, so seven. Um, so some kind of concave up function. It might be, and I'm looking at what's happening at four. Okay, so it might be that it's concave up and increasing, in which case at four, the linearization would be less than the actual function value. So it would be an underestimate. What if it is concave up and decreasing? At four, the linearization at 4.1 would be less than the actual function value. So I'm comparing the uh, value on the line with the function value at 4.1. Um, so either way, at 4.1, um, the line is less than the, is below the function. So L of 4.1 is an under approximation um, for any, either case. For this one, um, I'm given the graph of f prime. So that's the important thing to realize here is that I'm given the graph of f prime. And so I like to reason about what's happening with f by thinking about a number line. So I'm just gonna fill in a number line, my f prime number line. And so I know f prime is equal to zero where at negative four, negative two, one, and three. And then I can look to see where f prime is positive or negative. So f prime is positive when it, it when the graph of f prime is above the x-axis. So here and here and here. So it's positive uh, less than four um, between one and three and between three and four. And it's going to be negative when it is below the x-axis. So negative here and here. And so what does that mean about my function f? Well, if f prime is positive, that means f is increasing. And if, prime is, if f prime is negative, that means f is decreasing. Decreasing, f is increasing here, f is increasing. And so what I'm looking for is I'm looking for where there's a local, where f has a local minimum. So f will have a local minimum when it changes from decreasing to increasing, which happens right here at one. So the correct answer is c, x equals one. Suppose f is continuous and differentiable, and f double prime is less than zero. So that means it's concave down. Okay, so we're looking at a function on a, b. Um, it's continuous and differentiable. So it doesn't have any sharp corners, no jumps, no nothing like that. And it's concave down. Um, suppose further that f of b minus f of a over b minus a is greater than zero. So what does that translate to? That tells me that f of b is greater than f of a because I need that whole thing to end up being positive. I already know b is greater than a because of the way the interval is set up. 
So the bottom is positive. So to make the top positive, it has to be that f of b is greater than f of a. So if I draw in f of a here, I can draw in f of b up here. It has to be bigger. So this is just a sketch of what it might look like. And then I have a function that is concave down, and it has a critical point. So there's a critical point between those. And so there's some critical points. So it needs to be going up and then back down. And then at that critical point, it has a max. Okay, which of the following must be true? So we have um, f of c is the absolute maximum. So that has to be true. So there's f of c is up here. The highest value that the function reaches. Um, that's not true. f of a is the absolute minimum. That one has to be true. f of, oh, sorry, absolute minimum, that's four. So one and four are the correct answers. Okay, for this one, I wanna use the graph to determine the value for b, for which that equation has exactly two solutions on the interval from one to b. Um, so let's just try this out so that you can kind of see what we're looking at. So, um, for, for b equals 3, we'll just draw out what that's saying. So f of b minus f of 1 over b minus 1, that would be the slope of this line. And so it's saying I need to find a point where f prime is the same, has the same slope. So if I'm just looking visually, it'll probably be like right there. So I want to have a parallel line that is tangent to the function. And so it looks like we can see that there's only one there, so a is not correct. Um, at five, we're gonna have a similar thing going on here, right? We're just gonna have um, one place where um, where the where it's parallel. And uh, if you look closely, you can kind of see you're gonna have the same issue with uh, b equals seven and b equals eight. But if you look at b equals eleven, let's see what, how this one looks different from the others. So at b equals eleven, that's over here, and I can draw in that tangent, that uh, secant line, basically like that, and then I can see that there are two places where um, a tangent line to the graph is parallel to that secant line, and so we have here and here. So the correct answer is e, b equals eleven. Okay, the next is find and classify all local extreme values at the point, um, and so. All right, so we can, and inflection points. And so um, for me, it helps to organize myself on a number line. And so I'll just type in an F prime line and an F double prime line. Okay, and so it looks like the critical points we're dealing with are at three, at five, and then at 21 fifths, which is, let's see, 20 fifths is four. So 21 fifths is a little bit more than four. Um, so I'll go ahead and put that in on the F double prime. So 21 fifths. Okay, so those look like the points that we have issues with. So, okay, when F is less than negative, less than three, we're gonna get a negative cubed. So that'll be negative times a, a negative squared. So it'll be overall negative. If I'm in between three and five, let's see, this one will be positive. This one will be a negative squared. So it'll be positive. Um, and if I am in, if I am greater than five, I'll get a positive, positive, everything will be positive. So what does that mean about F? That means that here F is decreasing, here F is increasing, and here F is increasing. Okay, so let's look at F double prime. So if X is less than three, I'll get, um, I'll get a negative squared here. I'll get a negative here, and I'll get a negative here. So a negative squared times a negative times a negative will end up being positive. Um, at 21 fifths, or between three and 21 fifths, um, this one will be uh, positive, this one will be negative, and this one will be negative. So I'll get a positive times a negative times a negative, which is positive. If I'm in between 21 fifths and five, I'll get a negative here squared, and then I'll get a negative here, but I'll get a positive here. Um, so this one will end up being negative. And at uh, greater than five, I think everything will end up being positive. Okay, and so uh, if I think about what that means for f, if the second derivative is positive, that means f is concave up, f is concave up, f is concave down, f is concave up. Okay, so um, my maxes and min, so what that means is that at x equal three, we have a local min. 
at x equal 5, we have a nothing uh, as far as this is not a local max or min. At x equal 3, it's not an inflection point. At x equal 21 fifths, we have an inflection point because the concavity actually changes there. At x equals 5, we have another inflection point because concavity changes from concave down to concave up. Okay, um, this one, um, so the graph of the function, its derivatives are graphed. Okay, so um, we have f prime, f double prime, okay, and so on. All right, so this one looks like a quadratic. This one looks like a cubic, and this one looks like it might be a quartic. So my initial thought is that graph C is f, graph uh, A is uh, f prime, and graph B is f double prime, just thinking about the way the graphs look. Let's make sure that we are careful about that. So I want to think about the maxes and mins, local maxes and mins of f and see if those end up being zeros in the one I think is f prime. So it looks like you have a local max around negative three, yeah, and we have a local max here at one, and there's a zero, a local min here at three, so there's a zero. So that seems reasonable. And then on this one that I think is f prime, I want to look at its critical points and see if I have zeros there. So at approximately negative one and at approximately two, I have some zeros. And so I can see that the um, critical points uh, of graph A end up being um, zeros of graph B. So I think I am pretty clear that that's the correct answer. Okay, next one, um, compute the following derivatives. So we have derivatives listed on this last sheet. So let's look at the relevant ones. So the derivative, whoops, hang on, let me not use a highlighter. So the derivative with respect to x of arctangent x is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. And for this one, the derivative with respect to x of a to the x is equal to a to the x times the natural log of a. And the relevant one here is the derivative with respect to x of log base b of x is equal to 1 over log b times x. Okay, and so let's use those formulas to find these um, derivatives. So this is going to be that arctan formula, but it's also with chain rule. So we're going to do arctan, which is 1 over 1 plus x squared. And so the thing we're going to plug in is that inside function, which is x cubed. Then I'm going to multiply by, by the chain rule, the derivative of the inside, which will be 3x squared. Okay, for the next one, I want to take the derivative of the outside function, which is sine to the sine of or sorry, two to the whatever, right? And so um, I'm gonna use this formula here. So it's gonna be two to the inside stuff times the natural log of two. And what is that inside stuff with sine of theta? We're gonna leave that alone. Then we're gonna multiply by the derivative of the inside stuff. The derivative of sine theta is negative cosine theta. Uh, actually, no, just cosine theta. Derivative of sine is cosine. Okay, next I have, again, chain rule mixed with this uh, log formula. And so I'm going to take the derivative of the outside function, which is the log base 7. So it's going to be 1 over log of 7 times the inside stuff, which is t squared. And then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the inside, so that's 2t. This one says find dy dx for that curve. Um, and this is an implicitly defined function. I can see that the x's and y's are all mixed up in here. So we're gonna take the derivative implicitly with respect to x. So the derivative of x to the 1 half is 1 half x to the minus 1 half. Um, then I'm gonna do the derivative of negative cosine y. Derivative of negative cosine y will be um, negative, and then derivative of cosine is negative sine. So it'll end up being positive sine y. And then times the derivative of the inside will be dy dx and then equals, and then derivative of e to the y is e to the y times the derivative of the inside, which is dy dx. We gotta impose chain rule anytime we are um, taking the derivative of anything that's not x, because we're taking the derivative with respect to x. Uh, derivative of pi is just zero. And now I wanna solve for my um, dy dx, so I can see it appears two times. So I'm gonna add and subtract so that those terms that contain dy dx are on the same side. So I'll have sine y, dy dx minus e to the y dy dx equals, and I'll subtract that over to the other side, minus 1 half 
x to the minus 1 half. And now I can factor out the dy dx. So I have sine y minus e to the y dy dx equals negative 1 half x to the minus 1 half. And then I can divide that over. So negative 1 half x to the minus 1 half over sine y minus e to the y. So there's my final answer. Last one, after the OSU football game, so we've got bullet running down the field. So this total amount is uh, from here all the way across is 52 yards. So if I go halfway across, it's gonna be 26 yards. And that is not a changing quantity. So I'm gonna go ahead and label that on my picture there. And then I have this angle from the cameraman to the horse. So I'm gonna label that theta. And then this distance here from here to there is changing. I'm going to label that X. And so, um, all right, so I know that dx dt, that's going to be the speed at which the horse is running. And so it's running at 18 yards per second. Okay, and then d theta dt is what we are looking for. And we want to find d theta dt when... What happens when bullet has ran seven or let's see four seconds past when he passed the goal line so in four seconds he's gone 72 meters 72 yards excuse me so 72 yards so that means from the goal line to where bullet is is 72 yards which means x is 22. so when x equals 22 yards and then when x is 22 yards, that means that theta is going to be equal to, um, well, it means tangent theta will be equal to um, 22 over 26. Um, so that means theta is equal to tangent inverse of 22 over 26. Okay, so let's go over here. So I wanna find this when that, those are the conditions. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to come up with an equation that relates x and theta. And so we know that tangent of theta is equal to um, x over 26. And so I can multiply, well, I can multiply both sides by 26 so I don't have to deal with a fraction. Okay, and then I can take the derivative of both sides implicitly with respect to t. So I'll have 26 secant squared theta d theta dt equals dx dt. And now I'm ready to plug in. So I have 26 secant squared of, my theta is tangent inverse of 22 over 26 d theta dt. Um, equals uh, dx dt, which is 18. So then I can divide that over, so I get d theta dt is equal to 18 over 26. And when I divide by secant squared, remember secant is 1 over cosine, so I can just write this as cosine squared. Cosine squared of tangent inverse of 22 over 26. And I should be able to type that all into my calculator. You just want to make sure you're in radian mode. So if we type that all into our calculator, I'm gonna type it in actually like this with the squared, not here. I'm gonna type the squared in like this, all of that squared. So that's how I would actually type it into my calculator. So when you do type that in, you get 0.5284. And remember, it's radians per second because it's d theta dt, and theta is measured in radians. So that's it.